Does this image proves Bob Lazar is lying? According to 8 News Now Las Vegas, the following is an early sketch of the sports model Laser has drawn, Laser's early sketch according to 8 News Now Las Vegas Now, here is another sketch made by Laser in recent years which you can find on his Instagram to Laser's later sketch Other sketches made by Laser I've seen online match the later sketch in terms of the one significant detail that differs between the two sketches linked above, which is the portion of the craft that the middle floor occupies. I just don't think it's likely that it's due to some memory problem, even though I really want to believe his story. What do you guys think know about this seemingly significant discrepancy? I don't know if Laser is telling the truth or not. What I do know, is that memory, contrary to popular opinion, is extremely unreliable. A person recalling the details of an event including sketches for example shortly after it occurred, may then recall the same event 10 years later and, there could be marked differences in their recollection. Even when the truth is being told. Memory accuracy is a fallacy. You don't have to take my word for it, there's a huge evidence base of research articles to support this. It's about the same, very slight difference. He had only seen it a few times on a few occasions. He was there very infrequently and most of the time was spent figuring out what the gravity emitter could do so he wasn't usually working on the craft itself. Seems like this is a dead end. It's about the same, very slight difference. He had only seen it a few times on a few occasions. He was there very infrequently and most of the time was spent figuring out what the gravity emitter could do so he wasn't usually working on the craft itself. Seems like... Well, the thing is... There are those archways structured in the middle floor's wall, which can go down the lower half of the craft. So Bob first remembered the archways starting at the middle of the wall, and then at some point later decided they actually started at the bottom of the wall? I dunno, seems to me like the sort of a detail someone as sharp as Bob is unlikely to get confused about. Look, I totally get it. It was also Stanton Friedman's approach to the story. But have you considered the possibility that his educational lie was invented with the aim of increasing his credibility, so that more people will take his story more seriously, and thus he will be more protected from the government? Though creative, that doesn't add up. Without those credentials there is no way he would have been chosen to work on the crafts. He was in electronics tech, as listed by him on his marriage certificate, and then stated he started at loss almost as a tech. Yes his story has changed and he now claims he was always a physicist there, but you can find the interview on YouTube where he himself claims he was a lab tech. There would be absolutely no reason for the government to hire him for the role when there were plenty of people who would jump at the opportunity to do it that actually had the credentials. So while I agree that it was made up to increase his credibility, heck even George Knapp believes it is a lie. It doesn't make sense for it to be made up for purpose you're suggesting. So he got a job where he was supposed to work on super secret UFOs. With no education whatsoever, and only worked there for a few days, the first of which was filling out paperwork. Every. Single. Piece. Of the laser story is bullshit. The entire thing is a hole, for fuck's sake. Why are we talking about laser? We buried him in the 90s, and somehow he's dug himself back up. He's a fraud. The whole trying to trick Bigelow thing is what removed any little doubt I had left that laser is simply a fraud. I think we should probably realize that, people will believe what they will believe, and logic doesn't really make a difference. I think what we've got here are two handmade drawings made 30 years apart by someone who's not that great at drawing. They could be something I drew. I pretty much suck at drawing too, lol, it's about the same, very slight difference. He had only seen it a few times on a few occasions. He was there very infrequently and most of the time was spent figuring out what the gravity emitter could do so he wasn't usually working on the craft itself. Seems like this is a dead end. I'm not who you asked, but I'll post a comment made a while ago going through a few quick things, and though many on the list aren't proven lies. They at the very least are blatant contradictions in different statements by laser where both cannot be true.
just going off the top of my head. His marriage certificate from the summer of 1980 claimed that his highest level of completed education was 12th grade and his job was an electronics engineer. However, he then claimed he had completed two masters, which would have both required a four-year degree by May 1982. So that is not possible. He claimed to become a physicist at loss almost right after graduating from MIT. However, in a December 1989 interview, he claimed that he was a technician for a few years at loss almost before becoming a physicist at the lab. There was a pretty great breakdown of his jet car engine s performance being greatly overstated which you can find with a Google search. In the jet car article, published in June 1982, he had claimed to have just moved to Los Alamos from California about a month ago, spoke about working on the vehicle for the past few years in California, the reception of the car in California. However, had he actually gone to MIT he would have just come from Mass. MIT's spring semester always ends in May and that is always when their graduation is as well. Plus Laser had explicitly stated that he went directly from MIT to Los Almost he has repeatedly claimed that he went to MIT after completing his master's from Caltech. However, he has also claimed that he didn't receive his master's from Caltech until after working at the Los Almost lab for a few years before being sent by the lab to get his master's in the mid to late 80s. He claims to have a master's from Caltech in something they had never even offered a master's degree in that is electronics and electronic technology. On his bankruptcy filing in 1986, he said the only employment he had in the past six years was his in-home photo processing business. So he left off completely the loss almost lab, his legal brothel which he brags was making enough money that he was able to quit the lab, which is another contradiction because then he wouldn't have had time to be a physicist there. He married his second wife while married to his first wife. Which besides being illegal, you need to affirm that you aren't currently married to someone else when getting your marriage license. He has repeatedly claimed that his clearance at Area 51 was ultimately denied due to his then-wife cheating on him, and even stated they sat him down and played audio recordings that proved it. Which raises the question on why they'd let him start working on crafts prior to him getting cleared but that same year he claimed he not only had clearance but still had it because he just never went back to the facility for them to fire him after being caught out on the desert with his friends. But then in 2003 inches an extended interview published on DVD, he stated that he had majestic level clearance and went into detail about how many levels above top secret that was, how many people on the project had it, etc. Now he is back to the wife cheating on him causing him not to get clearance story. He had claimed to show his ID badge from the project, but then later admitted it was a recreation. He claimed that his birth certificate was destroyed erased by the government because he had called the wrong place, that is the hospital looking for a copy of it. But then was able to, if you believe Gene Huff, Laser's best buddy there, able to produce it himself for the PSI. But even if he didn't produce it, it was produced and referenced in the PSI somehow, he claims he wants nothing to do with the UFO community, yet he created and hosted a radio show in 1995 with Gene Huff called, UFO Line where they had guest on to talk about UFOs a story about the layout of S4 has been inconsistent, in a radio interview he claims that it was built up next to the side of a hill and partly into the side of the hill at the end of a well-worn road but has now shifted into it being completely built inside of the hill and not observable from the outside. People have walked clear across the alleged location of S4 and not seen any evidence of either, same with how you used to be able to fly over it and take pictures. The most recent raid on his business. His employee made a Reddit post right after it occurred, stating that they wanted to get ahead of the rumor mill and that the feds showed up because a murder suspect had bought something from them that may have been used to poison his wife, they had a warrant but laser cooperated handed over the documents they were looking for and the feds left. This was completely consistent with the local police records, which also showed that there was a warrant signed for both the business and laser's home a few days before the raid. However, by the time of the documentary and press tour was occurring, it grew into a raid where they brought Laser upstairs to interrogate him about a conversation that he had had with Corbell the day before, and claiming that the raid only occurred because of that conversation. 
but once again the warrant for the raid would have already been signed in advance that alleged conversation. There are more nuanced stuff, but these are easy ones for you to look into where you'll easily be able to find the supporting statements, documentation, etc. For example that 1989 radio interview was posted on Yahoo Tube.